Rosie here from RosiePena.com with Sewing and Style Blog. So today's video is going to be all about the Carolina jumpsuit. I'm going to talk you guys through which fabrics to choose and I'm also going to go through the pattern instructions and then of course we're going to have a step-by-step -step sew along video tutorial. So if you guys are interested in seeing that, just go ahead and keep watching. Okay, so this is the cover sheet of the Carolina jumpsuit. So this is just page one of the pattern instructions. I always like to just take this page to a white envelope and then stick my patterns inside of it. So then of course you have the rest of your pattern instructions. So the Carolina jumpsuit has three different length variations. So you can have a shorts version, which is basically a romper, and then you can have a culotte version, and then also a full length pant. And you can also choose between a short sleeve or a bias bound um, sleeveless armhole finish. So each of the versions are really cute. I think this pattern is perfect for spring and summer. So if you choose fabrics like linen, it's going to be really breathable and it's going to be really comfortable to wear in the summertime. So and then of course you can also choose like a lightweight, uh, like a rayon shawley would be really good. And then also um, a crepe. I think a crepe would look really pretty. I think it would kind of dress it up a little bit if you were to choose that for the Carolina jumpsuit. So there's really several different types of fabrics that you can use. So it is made for woven fabric. So let me go ahead and just show you what I'm wearing. Um, this, this is our Anna top and I made it out of a lace uh, fabric. So, and then underneath I'm just wearing a simple camisole. So I thought the Anna top would look really cute in a lace fabric. So it's just a basic simple, um, the Anna top is just a basic simple top. So you can use the crew neck like I have here or there's also a scoop neck version. But I thought this would look really cute um, like I mentioned and just a nice little eyelet fabric. I think it's perfect for summer. It makes it a lot more breathable. Paired it with this Louisa trousers. Kind of like a sporty feel, but it's really comfortable and perfect for sitting here and filming a video. So yeah, I just wanted to show you guys really quickly what I was wearing in case any of you were wondering. Okay, so like I was saying, the Carolina jumpsuit has three different variations. So in the video tutorial that I'm gonna show you guys in just a minute, I make the romper version. So it's the shorts version. And then I'm also making the sleeveless option because I live here in Texas and it's super hot at the moment. And I figure wherever you guys are, it's probably hot too. So we're gonna be making the shorts version with the bias bound armhole. But let's talk a little bit more about the pattern itself. So the description of the pattern says, a fashionable jumpsuit featuring side waist ties or a detachable belt. Carolina has an invisible back zipper and three length variations, including short, culotte, or a full length pant. Short sleeve or sleeveless armhole finish and works great with several types of light to medium weight woven fabrics. So as always with the pattern instructions, you just have the flat drawings of the different versions and then also you have your sizing chart which tells you which size you should cut out. So I always like to go by the finished garment measurements of the pattern because that's gonna give you a better idea of how the pattern is gonna fit whenever it's all finished. So for my size and my patterns, I always cut a size extra small. Unless I want an oversized fit, I'll go a size up, or unless I want a slim fit, I'll always go a size down. But typically, I'm always a size extra small in my patterns. In this video, we're gonna be doing the detachable belt. There's also a version that has side waist ties that are sewn into the side seams. But in this tutorial, we're going to be doing the detachable belt. So this is page two, and it also tells you that you're going, so you're going to need one 22 inch invisible zipper, you're gonna need two hook and eyes, which are kind of optional, and then you're also going to need to purchase some single fold bias tape to finish your neckline and to finish your armhole. So next on the pattern, you have your printing instructions, um, which just tell you how to print out the pattern, but I do have a video tutorial showing you step by step how to print our at home PDF patterns, so if you guys wanna check that out, I'll put a little eye card for you. So this is page three of the pattern instructions, it's just telling you um, how to print out your actual pattern and then there's also a diagram here which shows you how everything will look whenever it's laid out um, and you have everything taped together so just to give you a better visual of how it's going to look when it's all pieced together so the next page of the pattern instructions talks more about fabrics it's giving you some fabric options and they always are just a suggested fabric list so you do not have to go by the list that i provide for you here um, it is just kind of just more like a guideline but if you've sewn a lot of patterns before you can usually just get a good feel of what you think will work with the pattern, but this is made for woven fabric. So depending on which fabric you choose, it's always gonna give you a different feel for the finished product. But like I said, it's just a suggested fabric list. And then also it just shows, but then it also shows you um, if you're making the shorts, it gives you a little cutting diagram of how you can lay out your pattern pieces. But again, if you've sewn a lot in the past, then you can kind of just play around with your fabric and see how the patterns will fit best for your fabric. But it does go into a diagram showing you how you can lay out your pattern pieces. So then of course we go into the actual pattern instructions. So the pattern instructions that I included in the Carolina instructions is actually if you have 
an invisible zipper foot. So this is the standard way to attach an invisible zipper. I'm going to show you in this video a method where you can attach the zipper using just a regular zipper foot. So if you do have an invisible zipper, go ahead and use the pattern instructions because this is showing you how to attach it using your invisible zipper foot. So I'm actually going to be showing you a way in this video to attach your invisible zipper using just a regular zipper foot. So yeah, there are several instructions here just showing you how to sew everything together, telling you how to attach the sleeve and how to attach the waist ties and how to finish your armholes. Um, and then of course at the end of your pattern instructions, there's just a little spot for you to put your bust measurement, your waist, and also your hip measurement. And then of course, as always, if you do end up making our patterns, I always encourage you at the bottom here to just use our hashtag, just use the hashtag RP Carolina Jumpsuit. And then that way everybody can see your beautiful jumpsuits and I can share them on Instagram. And then there's also a little spot here at the top just to write any notes that you might have as far as what you notice on the pattern. Maybe you had to take up a little bit more on the hem. Maybe you had to make a few alterations here and there. So there's always a little spot here for you to just write little notes. So as far as the ease of sewing the Carolina jumpsuit, I would say this is for basically like a curious beginner. I don't think this would be a great pattern for you to start right off the bat if you've never sewn anything before, but I think if you've sewn a few things, especially if you've sewn a skirt that has a zipper or anything like that, then I think you can definitely tackle the Carolina jumpsuit. I don't think this pattern is perfect for an absolute beginner, but um, if you have attached a zipper before and you have used bias tape before, then I think this would be a good pattern for you to try out. And even if you haven't sewn a zipper before or attached bias tape, this would be a great video tutorial to go ahead and get started and just improve your skills as far as sewing. So I do really love this pattern. It's one of my favorites from the entire collection and it has been a very popular choice. So I'll have all the information linked in the description bar below on where you can get your Carolina jump. So I'm also going to go more in depth about which fabrics I use and also which fabrics that I suggest for you to use. And I'll have links and all that good stuff in the blog post to the video. So I'll have all the information linked in the description bar below. But that is really it for this intro of the video. I'm going to go ahead and just jump right into the tutorial. And as always, if you guys have any questions, just go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Or you can always email me at hello at And I'll get back to you as fast as I can. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the Carolina jumpsuit. I really enjoyed designing this pattern. I think it's a really great pattern. It's so comfortable to wear. And like I mentioned, it's one of my favorites from the collection. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys. Okay, so first we need to pin our front to our back with right sides together at the inner leg seam. Go ahead and repeat that step to your remaining front and your remaining back. We're going to take that to our sewing machine and we're going to sew with a half of an inch seam allowance. Once you finish sewing both inner leg seams, go ahead and finish your raw edges with a serger or your desired method. I went ahead and serged the entire inseam on both the front and the back pattern pieces. And then we're going to place it with right sides together and we're going to pin first along the center front and then we're gonna pin along the center back. On the pattern pieces, you should have a double notch. This is showing you where the zipper tape will stop. If you forgot to mark your notches, go ahead and just bring your zipper tape in and align it along the center back. Go ahead and stop pinning at the very bottom edge of your zipper tape. Take your fabric to your sewing machine and you're gonna sew along your pinned edges with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch very well at the double notch. You're going to actually continue pinning along the entire center back seam and you're going to sew this with a basting stitch. So make sure you're using a basting stitch. In a later step, we're going to remove these stitches. So continue sewing along the center back using your basting stitch and a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now that you've sewn your entire inseam area, it's time to attach our zipper. So 
So we're going to place our zipper in place with the wrong side of your fabric facing up and the right side of your zipper facing down. Instead of using pins, you can also use Wonder Tape. You can get this at any Joann's fabric or you can also order it online. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description bar below. This just makes attaching the zipper a lot easier. So go ahead and just place the zipper with right sides facing down and the wrong side of your fabric facing up. And you're just going to use that wonder tape to make sure everything stays nice and even. Go ahead and remove your standard sewing machine foot and attach your zipper foot. Like I mentioned earlier, for this tutorial we're going to be using a standard zipper foot. You don't need to purchase an invisible zipper foot to use this method. Now working with just the zipper tape and the seam allowance of the jumpsuit, we're going to use a basting stitch and we're going to secure the zipper tape in place along the seam allowance only. So you're not sewing on the actual jumpsuit, you're just sewing along the seam allowance and you're sewing along the zipper tape. and secure the opposite side of the zipper tape as well with the basting stitch. Once you've basted your zipper tape in place, the next step is to remove the stitching along the center back seam. So remember we used a basting stitch along the center back seam from the double notches up. Go ahead and use your seam ripper and remove those basting stitches. Make sure you stop at the end of your basting stitches along those double notches and then you're going to go ahead and open your center back zipper. Now making sure your zipper foot is still attached to your sewing machine, we're going to stitch very close to the coils of the zipper tape. So just like you see me doing here in the video, using a regular stitch length, you're going to stitch very close to the coils. You might even need to pull apart the coils slightly with your fingers just to get really really close to the coiled edge. backstitch very well when you get to the very end of the zipper and then we're going to start from the very top of the other side of the zipper and we're going to stitch starting about an inch away from the raw edge using a regular stitch length and again making sure you're stitching very close to that coiled edge. The reason why I like to secure this spot first is to prevent shifting. Whenever you start at the very bottom of the zipper and then work your way up usually the fabric will shift causing an uneven zipper you've secured that area of the zipper, now you can start from the bottom and work your way up. Again, making sure you're stitching very close to that coiled edge of your zipper. Once you've finished securing your zipper in place, you can go ahead and zip up the back of your zipper, making sure to remove any loose threads. Now that our zipper is attached, we can sew our jumpsuit together with right sides facing at the shoulder seam and also at the side seams. So go ahead and pin your jumpsuit together at both shoulder seams and along both side seams as well. Take your fabric to your sewing machine and sew with a half of an inch seam allowance along both side seams and along both shoulder seams. Then you can go ahead and finish off your seams with your desired method. Time to finish our neckline, so go ahead and grab your half of an inch single fold bias tape and we're going to pin it along the raw edge of the neckline. Go ahead and leave about half of an inch of bias tape extended from the zipper tape area and make sure you have your bias tape laying flat along the neckline and the raw edges even. Continue pinning with as many pins as you need to to secure your bias tape in place.
Once you've secured your bias tape in place, we're gonna take this to our sewing machine and we're gonna sew along the quarter inch seam line. So we're just gonna be stitching along the crease line of the bias tape, which is a quarter inch away from the neckline. to turn that half inch extension in towards the wrong side of the fabric making sure that your bias tape is pressed away from your neckline you're just going to turn that half of an inch in and then you're going to fold it again onto itself with wrong sides together i like to use a wonder clip along this area because it does get a little bit bulky continue folding the bias tape in towards the neckline and you're going to continue pinning along the entire neckline making sure the bias tape is folded in towards the wrong side so the bias tape should not be showing on the right side of the fabric. Once you finish turning the bias tape towards the wrong side of the fabric, you're going to baste it in place. Then you're going to turn the fabric over and you're going to top stitch along your basted edge. To finish the neckline of your Carolina jumpsuit, we're going to move on to finishing the armholes. So just like we did for the neckline, you're going to pin the bias tape starting at the armhole underarm seam. You're going to continue pinning along the entire armhole area, just like you did for the neckline. Once you reach the area where you initially started pinning your bias tape to your armhole, you want to go ahead and leave a little bit of extra fabric. We're going to have to overlap these pieces and sew them right sides together. Repeat the same exact steps to your remaining armhole. Before we sew our bias tape to our armhole, we're going to overlap those bias tape ends along the seam line of the armhole edge where we first started pinning. Go ahead and make a marking where the two pieces overlap. And then you're going to place your bias tape with right sides together making sure it's completely open and you're going to sew along that marked edge. Once you finish sewing, just trim off your excess fabric and then you can continue attaching your bias tape to your armhole. This just gives you a really nice clean finish on your bias tape binding. Now go ahead and sew along the creased edge of your bias tape, a quarter inch away from the raw edge of your armhole, just like you did for the neckline. Once you finish stitching the bias tape in place, remember to press your bias tape towards the wrong side of the fabric. Baste the bias tape in place and then top stitch along your basting stitches just like you did for the neckline. We're gonna move on to our waist tie. My camera shut off during filming, but you wanna make sure that you have pattern piece number five cut out twice, and you're gonna sew along the short edge with right sides together using a half of an inch seam allowance. Then you're gonna press that seam open and you're gonna fold the tie onto itself with right sides together. You want to take your fabric to your sewing machine and you're going to sew along the pinned edges with a half of an inch seam allowance. 
So sew along the entire length of the fabric and then you're gonna pivot and you're gonna sew along with the short ends as well, making sure to leave a small opening along the center seam. Once you've sewn your waist tie, go ahead and trim off that excess fabric in the seam allowance. You can use a ruler and your rotary cutter to help you with this step. Once you've sewn your waist tie, we need to turn it with the right side facing out. I like to use a small tool called a bodkin, so I just slip the bodkin inside the small opening and then I pinch a corner of the fabric. And then I use that to pull the remaining tie with right sides facing out. Then I repeat the step to the other side of the tie as well. Once you have your entire waist tie with right sides facing out, you can use a sewing pin to get out those small corners. Then the very last step of your waist tie is to turn the seam allowance in towards the wrong side of your small opening. Go ahead and pin your opening shut and then you're going to take it to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch very close to the turned in edge. This is just going to close off your waist tie. Jumpsuit on and determine how much you want to hem from the lower edge. Press the hem to the inside and sew very close to the raw edge. Once you finish with that, you're all done with your Carolina jumpsuit. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys!